Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to talk to you about UAE free zones. I'm going to answer some questions that some viewers had a little while ago around, you know, what is the best free zone? What are the consequences of free zones? I see a lot of bad information online and I hear a bunch of bad information from people. And I think it's fundamentally based on the fact that people are trying to market a particular position and they need to use that false information in order to end up, you know, selling something overpriced. So. We're gonna clear that up right now. Before we do that, if you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button, nail the notification bell. Really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. We're trying to grow it and produce great content for you every day. Check out our videos. And if you'd like help at all with these subjects of international structuring, either for yourself personally, for your business, uh, traveling or moving abroad, uh, minimizing your taxes for your company, yourself, implementation or strategy, please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael Rosmer. There's a link in the description below. Or you can send a message through our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so there's 45 UAE free zones and there's a bunch of other ones under construction. All right, so for those of you who don't know, really quick recap, uh, in UAE, there's basically three types of companies. There is international companies, which I think usually are not a very good way to go. There are free zone companies and there are onshore companies, okay? Free zone companies are the most common because onshore companies traditionally you needed to have it owned a bunch by UAE people and there's all sorts of nuances about that and so you'd have these side agreements with them and anyways it's kind of complicated and usually it wasn't relevant because you didn't need to uh, for the types of transactions you're doing so the free zone company was perfectly fine okay this raises the question of all right if I'm gonna form and I have 45 free zones to pick from or can I pick from any free zone the answer is not always, okay? Some of these are restricted in the types of licenses, the type of businesses that they'll accept, et cetera. But that being said, there's probably a lot that you could choose from, all right? And so then the question becomes, all right, well, if I could choose from a bunch, which one do I choose? And the reality is they have different restrictions, different criteria, and this can change your prices quite a lot. So first of all, just the prices in general can be quite different. But then on top of that, you know, some have audited financial requirements, some don't have audited financial requirements, some are in a situation where you have to have an office with a certain number of employees, some you only need a flexi desk, some like, there's all these different factors that play in there. And the story that I've heard from people quite a bit is some notion that it's like, oh, hey, well, there's these good free zones and there's the bad free zones and if you're in the bad free zones, you're not gonna get this. And I'm gonna give you my experience on the ground based on actually forming companies, actually working with clients, actually talking to banks, etc. And that is, it doesn't really matter. Generally, you're best off just to go with the option that is most convenient and uh, workable for you, okay? Some people are like, oh, you know, you wanna be in Dubai, Internet City, because banks are more likely to open for you. Uh, not really. What makes the difference is not whether you're in Dubai, Internet City, or you know, oh, Amil Kwan, uh, or one of these lesser known free zones, or some Sharjah free zone, or whatever. That's not the thing, from what I can tell, that makes a difference with, with banks. What makes a difference with, with banks is, is there local substance, okay? Do you have a, like, are you really physically present in UAE? Yeah, that can make a difference, right? Do you have an office? Is it like, is this actually a UAE-based company or is it a company that's just registered here and doing business abroad? That can make a difference, okay? But provided that you, and so in some cases, you know, if you're in Dubai Internet City or something, you're gonna pay all sorts of high fees and have to rent some office space and hire some staff, you know, this kind of thing, right? Uh, versus if you're in another one, you don't need to do all that. And, you know, what does that mean? Well, it means like in this case, you clearly are established there. But if you are clearly established there with this other one, from what I can tell, it makes no difference. I've not had a problem with banks where this was the deciding factor. And I know some people say that it does. I think that they confuse these two things. They conflate the idea of, oh, hey, in this case, you have real substance. In this case, you don't have real substance. It's the substance that matters, not, uh, not the free zone that you're formed in. And I literally could go through, I have a, a document from the banks that is like their due diligence process that you won't see it, but uh, it goes through like how they assess the risk, right? Have you been to the location? Does the location look like there's actually the, with the business that they say it is there? Is there a sign? Is there this? You know, like there's all sorts of different things that they use to scope out and identify internally 
what the risk factors are uh, for this business. And that could have some bearing on, do you get an account? What's the stability of the account? You know, how many issues do you have tr doing transfers, et cetera, et cetera. That, that stuff can matter, right? But that is not uh, the free zone. So with that in mind, what I will tell you is simply, if you're setting up, set up with the free zone that is most convenient and most cost effective for you. These two things can be somewhat different. So I'm not necessarily going, saying go with the cheapest option. Option. The cheapest option isn't necessarily the best option. Sometimes there's different promotions and things like this. They'll give out visa specials and things like that. Uh, it's not necessarily the cheapest option that's the best, uh, but go with the option that is this blend, and that's probably going to serve you best. If you want help, reach out to me. I can connect. We deal directly with a bunch of the free zones, and so we can connect you directly, and you know, I can save you money. Or if you want my team to help you, they can kind of go through and manage the process and take care of it for you and kind of walk through so it's a little bit of a less hassle for you. So anyway, any of those things, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you have feedback, please give it to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, reach out to us. Again, you can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael-Rosmer, link in the description below. And I'm gonna look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.